has its ups and downs. Turn your oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. to an ugly frown. Seems that when I fix one thing, another one comes, clouding up my vision. But I can feel the sun. I believe that I can do this. I know that I can win. Just as long as I have his love within. I believe that I can make it. I can make it through the night. I believe that I can walk on with my head held high. I believe that I am special in every way. But in order to have my victory, I gotta believe. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We welcome you once more and again to this broadcast from First Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church here in the great city of Gainesville, Florida. Thanking God as always, as always, thanking him for the blessing of a new day's journey and then the giving and allowing us the strength to be able to make it through this day. We pray, God, that your life is being blessed. We pray, God, that God has continued to shine his love upon you as he has always done. And we just thank you for being a part of this broadcast and allowing us to be able to come to you once more again with the word of God, to be able to encourage you, lift you up, and be able to let you know that God is still in control. That's always what I share with you each and every week, that God is still in control. This is his world, and he knows everything that's going on within it. And he has the power as well as the authority to make whatever changes he so desires. 
We bless you. We bless you. And we thank God for the privilege of being able to share a word with you this morning. We're not going to prolong your time because we realize that time is a valuable, valuable commodity. We want to be able to, to value it and be able to, to share that also what God has given unto us to share with you. As always, before we go into the word, we love to have a word of prayer because we need God's guidance and direction, even in being able to deliver his word. Let us pray. Precious Father in heaven, the creator, maker of everything, the provider of all things. We come once more and again to the throne of grace, Lord, to lay our petition upon your feet, dear Father, asking that your perfect will and your way be always be done in our life. Thank you for the grace and the favor that you showed upon us, Lord. As we arise to a new day we haven't seen nor will we see again. Thank you for the many times you have kept us as we slumbered and slept. Let us let Heavenly Father go into rest and perfect peace. We thank you, dear Father, for your Son, our Savior, our Lord, and our Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking on the sins and iniquity of all mankind and bearing them on yonder scabbard cross and rising up in victorious over death, burial, and the grave. We thank you for the comfort and the presence of he, the Holy Spirit, that lives in each one of the believers' life. And we pray now, dear Father, as we go into this word, Lord, that you just lead us and guide us in the way in which you want it to be spoken. And allow your people to have an ear to hear. And please use me as a vessel in your hand one more time so that you can be able to receive the glory. We pray, Heavenly Father, for this country, for the turmoil that we've seen these last few days. We ask mercy upon them, dear God. We ask, dear Father, Lord, that you bring peace, dear Father. And Lord, not a peace, Heavenly Father, a man, but only your peace can be able to rule and shape this world into a better world. Oh, the peace that surpasses all understanding. We pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, for the bereaving families, Heavenly Father, that we know of, dear Father. Bless, keep, and watch over them, dear God. Oh, Lord, in the way that only you can comfort their hearts and their minds and their spirit, dear God. Oh, Lord, let them know that you're too wise to make a mistake that you do just to do wrong, dear God. Bless them, Heavenly Father, Lord. Comfort and keep them. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. And I say, Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. This I pray in your son, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ask that you take your Bibles and look with us in the New Testament this morning. The New Testament, we're looking there in the book of Mark. Mark. Mark, and we'll be looking at the very sixth chapter of Mark. Starting there, praise the Lord, at verse number one. Chapter six and verse one. And it reads, And he went out from thence and came to his own and came to his own country. His disciple and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Josie, and Judas, and Simeon, and not his sisters here with us, and they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. Verse 5, And he could there do no mighty works, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folks and healed them. Verse number six will be our last verse, and it reads, And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went around about the village teaching. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went around about the village teaching. We want to use this morning for a topic, if you don't mind. Faith removes disappointment and unbelief. Faith removes disappointment and unbelief. Church, my brothers and sisters, these last few days, we as a nation have witnessed something we never could have imagined 
in our lifetime. During a time when we should be healing, right now we are hurting. Where there should be comfort, there is confusion. What should have been a time of praying has turned into a nation of pleading. Pleading for the next 11 days to come quickly. To bring an end to the chaos, the confusion, and the carelessness we have witnessed in these last few days. Lives have been lost. Arrests have been made. And unbelief has become a reality. We no longer have the assurance that the one of the most fortified, strongest, and the most protected building in the world could ever be attacked, raided, and overtaken. One of the many, many words that can or could be connected to this past Wednesday, this past Wednesday calamity, is the word disappointment. It is a word we are all familiar with, for we have experienced it and we have conveyed it. It is a word that calls one to experience sadness, heavy hardness, displeasure, and regret. If you and I would reminisce in our minds the many times disappointment has knocked on the doors of our life and how it has become, uh, come at the most inopportune time. Disappointment comes unexpectedly. Uh, some of us do not have to reach way back for it could be just a few months, a few weeks that we've experienced disappointment. It could be just a few days or just a few moments ago that disappointment showed up in our life. Disappointment comes unexpectedly. It, it comes without warning. It comes all at once sometimes. Disappointment, my brothers and sisters, is just what it does. It disappoints. But one thing, one thing, one thing, hallelujah, we can rest on is that we have the ability to make choices as to whether we will allow disappointment to keep us bound. We have the choice to, to, to make the determination when we allow disappointment to, to make us broken and abused. We can make the choice to take the DIS out of disappoint. We can make disappoint into a point. Appointed to greatness. Appointed to a better tomorrow. Appointed to the destiny which God has ordained and declared and decreed on our life. Remove the D-I-S and replace it with T-H-I-S. This too shall pass. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I'm certain that it will be removed and cast aside. It will not be a stumbling block, but it will be a stepping stone. It will not be my end, but it will be my beginning. It will not be my hindrance, but it will be my hurdle. God will use my circumstance. God will use my pain. God will use, yeah, yeah, he will even use my disappointment for his glory, church. For his glory. The country may be painting and suffering, confused, but God can take the negative and make a positive out of it so that he can get a glory to get the glory out of it. That's what he does with life. He picks up the trash of our life and he takes it and he makes it and he molds it and he shapes it, blow breath in our broken body and he allows us to be able to become new saints of God and we go and do marvelous works for God. God specializes in taking the broken pieces of our life and putting them together the way that only he can to make us better women and men, better community, a better state, a better country. We won't allow what one man can do to tell out what God know he can do. Hallelujah. 
the word of God in today's text. Let us know that we're not the only ones who have experienced disappointment. Here we find Jesus in his hometown and the people there are having a problem believing that he is the Christ. Uh, the text will show us that unbelief will limit the movement of God in our lives. And each one of us ought to ask ourselves daily, do we still believe or does our belief waver as we experience incident? Do our belief waver as circumstances and as life bring problems our way? Do our faith in God wavers? The text will let us know that we need to be grounded in the confidence and the assurance and the faith that God is still who he is. God Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, I tell you. God can and he will take care of each one of us. Yes, Jesus is going back to his hometown. And as the story unfolds, church, as it unfolds, he and his, and his disciples are there. And they go to the synagogue and they begin to teach on the Sabbath day. The word of God says he told as one who had authority and not as the scribes. The word of God said he told as one who has authority. He has authority because everything he wrote in the book, he is the book. He is the book. He's the author of the book. Everything that's in the book, it circumference around Jesus' church. He told us one who had authority, not as the scribes. In other words, he gave them insight into God's word. And they were astonished. They said, where did this man get these things and what is this wisdom given unto him as such miracles as these are performed by his hand? Church, they were asking the right question, but the problem came in the form of the answer. Look at what they said in verse number three. They said, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and the brother of James and Joseph? and Judas and Simeon and all his sisters here with us and they took they took offense at him what they were showing was not faith but what they were showing was unbelief we know this by what it said in verse number six where it said and he wondered Jesus did he wondered at their unbelief the message here at church is simple it's a simple message that unbelief will limit the power of God. Mm. And but unbelief, unbelief in God will cause consequences. Yes, unbelief in God will cause consequences to show up in your life. Look at the consequences. Amen. Jesus' hometown folks caused their life in their life. Mm. It could be seen right there in verse number five. But verse five said, look at the consequences. He could do no miracles there itself. He laid his hands. Amen. Are you with me, church? He could do no miracles there itself. He laid his hands upon a few six people, sick people, and healed them. In other words, in other words, what the text is telling us, because of, their un, because of their unbelief, Jesus was limited in what he could do for them. Help me, Holy Spirit. He was limited in what he could do for them. So this morning, I want us to look at three most important details this text is showing you and I. This text is showing us something that, that we should make sure that don't shake our faith in who God is and what God can do. I know these last nine months have been terrible. They've been 
a time that you and I have never been familiar with and we thought that we would never experience what we experiencing now and even with the current crisis that we seem like we're in I want to encourage you each week that I'm here that God is still in control and that's in my soul my spirit and in my heart and it's on my mind that God is always in control no matter what it seems like no matter how dark it gets God is the light of the world and because he's the light of the world that lets me know he has control over the entire world hallelujah the first thing i want to look at with you if you don't mind is the cause what was the cause of their unbelief look again at the answer to their question in verse number three it said is this is not this the carpenter the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judith and Simeon and not his sisters here with us. And they took offense at him. The cause of their unbelief is based on the fact that they were limited by what they could see, by what they could touch, by what they could understand. What they saw, what they saw was a copper, the, the son of Mary, the young boy who had grew up in their community. But what they really had before them was the Messiah. What they really had before them was the Christ, was the son of the living God. Their limited view kept them from seeing who Jesus really was. They had stereotyped Jesus and could not see beyond their own natural understanding of who they thought Jesus was. I wonder how many times we have interfered with God's work all because of our limited view. How many times have we restricted God from blessing our life because we did not understand what he was doing, why he was doing it, and how he was doing it? How many times have we cut off the blessing of knowledge and of wisdom all because the teaching was too painful, all because the teaching was too hard, all because the teaching brought with it some suffering? Understand, church, the teaching is beneficial, and sometimes the teaching is hard. We're being taught right now in this season in which we're in how we ought to value the time that God has given us. We're being taught right now in this season that we're in, taught the meaning and the purpose of prayer, how to communicate with God. We're taught in this season, in this time in which we're living in, that we should not take anything for granted, that we should always be thankful for everything that God allows us to be receiver of. We're being taught it's hurtful, it's painful, but guess what? It's beneficial to us, hallelujah. It will make us better brothers and sisters. It will be, make us better neighbors. It will teach us how to be more considerate. Yes, we do not have to understand everything that God is doing in our life. I'm just glad that he's doing it, hallelujah. Look at this, we do not have to understand how things work in order to receive it by faith and to receive the benefits that it brings to our life. I may not understand electricity, but I'm not going to live, live in the dark, hallelujah. I thank God, amen. I thank God, amen, for the many blessings he has sent my way that I have not, that has went beyond my ability to understand why he did it. The many blessings that have shown up unannounced in my life. The many blessings that God has blessed me to be able to receive of. I don't know why he does it. I don't understand it beyond my comprehension. But guess what? I thank him for doing it. I might not understand why, but I got the sense of no simple enough to know that I ought to say thank you God. Thank you God for everything you sent my way. Thank you for my health. Thank you for allowing me to stand on my own two feet. Thank you for allowing me to have my right mind. Thank you Lord God for the blood running warm in my veins. Thank you Lord God for another day's journey. I don't know why you blessed me with these blessings but I'm so grateful for it. I'm thankful for it because I serve a God that loves me and because he loves me and care for me. I don't have, I don't have a problem with worrying about tomorrow because he holds tomorrow hallelujah he holds tomorrow in his hand hallelujah yes he does 
Hallelujah. There are times in which we must step beyond what we can see in order to really see God. Hallelujah. The Bible teaches us that we walk by faith and not by sight. Walking by faith limit what God can do. Not only church, did they have a limited view, but they also had a limited heart. These people, these people did not want to believe in Jesus. After all, Jesus was one of them. They knew him. He grew up in their community. They knew his father and his mother, his brother and his sister. They had watched them grow up. They felt, how could this little boy who grew up in that neighborhood be anything more than what we are, amen. Church, not only could they not see, but they also did not want to see it. Are you with me? Not only could they not see, but they did not want to see. They had limited heart as well as a limited view of who Jesus was. Understand church, there are people who feel the same way about you and I. They want to still class us along with them just because they're still doing the same things that they've been doing majority of all their life. They feel that they can bring you and I down, it will lift them up. They say, how could they ever change? I remember when they did such and such and such. I know they can't be saved. I, I know they can't be real. It's just a matter of time. That's what they're saying concerning you and I. But we must understand that people will talk. And you can't allow the talk to affect your walk. The more they talk, the more your walk ought to be. The walk ought to be straight in line with the will of God for your life. That's one thing I thank God for when I look at Jesus like no matter what people were saying about him, he was focused on what God has sent him to do. And God has put an assignment on each one of our lives. Once he saved us, he gave us an assignment. And don't you worry about what people say. People have been talking from generation to generation and will continue to talk. But what you ought to do is make sure your walk is right so they talk and not only be a proof that you're wrong about your living, but their talk would be in vain because you're walking the way God wants you to walk. Help me, Holy Spirit. The Bible say they were offended at Jesus. Their pride will not allow them to accept that he was such more, he was so much more than they were. But Jesus understood for he says in verse number four, a prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown and among his own relatives and in his own household. Jesus knew because of their pride, they would not receive him as a prophet. Understand church, to receive a prophet reward, you must receive a prophet as a prophet. Had they received Jesus as the son of God, they would have been receivers of his ministry, hallelujah. But because they received him as a man of the flesh, they lost the opportunity to be touched by the power of God. Many today would miss out on the touch of God in their life because they see Jesus just as a good man and not as God's man. God in the flesh. Many would miss from touch from God a change in church that can affect their life and make them better because they refuse to give their life to the Savior. Many will miss out on many blessings because they didn't receive the one they could bless them. We looked at the, now we want to look at the consequence, if you don't mind. What is the consequence of the unbelief? The first is that the power of God it's locked up. Know what it says in verse number five. He could do no miracles there. It did not say that Jesus would not. It said he could not. Unbelief church locks up the power of God. It limits what God can do in our lives. Understand this. Let's make it clear. God is not powerless 
because of our unbelief. But he has designed that power to be used in the purpose and response to faith. You see, there are things that are designed to work in a certain way. God has made things to work according to his will for the purpose to give him the glory. For his will shall be done. See, you can try hard as you can to make his will work another way, but it just won't work. You won't succeed. The power of God, hallelujah, is designed to be released as we trust God, as we put our faith in God, as we know that God is able to do anything but fail, as we walk alongside God every day of our life, allowing him to lead, guide, and direct us as we begin to continue to have a relationship with God. The more I have a relationship with him, the more I can trust him, the more I can believe in him, the more I can hold him. Even when the storms of life show up, I know I got an anchor and that anchor is holding me not allow me to drift away with the storm, hallelujah. Mm. Not only is the power locked up, but the provisions of God is limited. Jesus came to his town with a desire to minister to them, but because of their unbelief, the provision that God had designed to give them was limited. Look at that. Jesus was on a mission to go back to his hometown to minister to them, to bless them, to encourage them in the word of God, to heal and deliver, to set free. But because they were, they, they, because of their unbelief, he was limited in the blessings which he gave out. I wonder how many times we have lack in our faith and because our lack of faith that God can do the miraculous because of our lack we were just limited to just a small portion of the blessing that God wanted to give us can I get a witness out there the word tells us that only a few believing folks were healed mm. The others did not receive anything from God. Why? Because unbelief locks up the power of God and it's also limit the provisions of God. I don't know, brother and sister, I can remember when I was going to the church there in the start and had just maybe been a member about a year and I saw a couple of good friends of ours I saw how God was constantly blessing them. They was always cheerful. Their family was, was, was so lovable and so compassion, so much compassion and love that they showed people they came in contact with. And me and my wife, my wife and I, we experienced that great relationship and that relationship is even strong today. I witnessed that. When I witnessed how God was blessing them, I just went to them and I said, why and how are you getting blessed so much? And they told me something that changed my perspective on giving. They said, because we give God what right for belong to him. They were faithful in their tithing. They were faithful in their prayer. They were faithful in their walk with God. They showed me something that I needed to learn. And because I learned that today, I now am alongside with them and realizing that you cannot give God. The more you give God, the more he give unto you. If you do what right and give God what's rightfully healed, God will bless you exceedingly abundantly of all that you could think on or imagine. I thank God for that family. They do who they are. They know what I'm talking about. And I thank God for them for being a vital part of my life, not only then, but even right now. I wonder how the those felt that was them that believed in Jesus and they received the blessing. And those who were standing by watching and criticizing, they didn't get blessed. 
Somebody out there this morning, somebody out there this morning, you see God working it out for others, but the same God that worked it out for them can do the same thing for you. He's using them as a billboard, as an advertisement to draw you closer to them. Help me, Holy Spirit. Let's look at the cure. We looked at the consequences, we looked at the cause, but now there is a cure. What is the cure? It's simple. The cure to unbelief is faith. Me asking what is faith and how do we receive it? Faith, my brothers and sisters, simply trusting in Jesus. What I'm talking about is not knowledge about him. But what I'm talking about is having faith in him because he had have faith in him because you have a relationship with him. Having faith in him because you have a relationship with him. Understand this. Real faith is trusting Jesus for what Jesus can do. Real faith it's trusting that God will work it out. Real faith that in the midst of my storm, in the midst of my situation, in the midst of my heartache, in the midst of my pain, in the midst of my sorrow, I know God is still working it out for my good. That's real faith. Real faith. Make me turn to God and say, God, remember me. Real faith. Let me know that when the storms of life come, there's one that's going to hold me in the midst of the storm. Real faith is a faith that don't waver back and forth, being dictated by what is or will, is not going on in your life. Mm. Somebody may be asking, how do we come to the place where we can really have faith in him? How can we come to the place where we're willing to step out from what we can see and step beyond that that we cannot see? Let me repeat that one more time because somebody they need to hear. Amen. Somebody need to. How can we come to the place where we are willing, where we are willing, where we are willing to step from where we can see and step beyond that that we cannot see? That's a good question, and the answer can be found in Hebrew, the 11th chapter and verse number one. It's where it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Look at this church. Faith is the substance, it's the assurance, it's the confidence, it's the, it's the absolute without a doubt faith that I know even though I can't see it right now, even though it's not manifested itself for me to be able to see it visually, but yet still in my spirit, in my heart, in my soul, I know without a doubt that it is there because my faith is not re recognized in what I'm asking for, but my faith is recognized in who can give me what I'm asking for. Hallelujah, that's a word for something. Somebody. My faith is not really what I'm asking for, but who can give me what I'm asking for. If I'm asking for healing, he can give me the healing. If I'm asking for deliverance, he can give me the deliverance. If I'm asking for peace, he can give me for peace. If I'm asking for joy, he can give me joy. My faith in what is in him who can give me what I'm asking for this morning. It's the assurance of things, hope for the evidence. In other words, the proof, the conviction of the things not seen. Hallelujah. One short story to tell you. I can remember when my life was falling apart, was crumbling. And my wife, who was always a godly woman, she told me one time as I was struggling, she said she had a dream and she saw a man in a pulpit preaching and he was wearing black. And she told me, that man was not me. I was hurt, I was distraught. It pained me to hear my wife, who I knew loved me, but because I have done so much to misplace that love that I felt should have showed her, it hurt me to hear that. But as life continued to go on, 
It's my life, God, rooted in God. If I turn my life over to Him, I just, and I got a relationship with Him. Years passed. God made changes. And one day, unannounced, my wife said, that dream, God brought it back to me. And that man that I saw now is you. God can do it, but you got to be willing to let him do it. Hallelujah, you got to have the faith. You got to have the faith. You got to have the faith. The faith to say yeah, but everybody else is saying no. The faith to fight, but everybody else is fleeing. The faith to stand, but everybody else wants to compromise. The faith to obey God when others are rebelling against God. You got enough faith to claim the victory when others are admitting to defeat. You got have the faith to follow Christ wherever he may lead you. Through the storm or through the rain, through the hardship and even through the pain, through the ups as well as the down, the mountain victories and the valley low defeats. You got to learn to follow God, to hold on to his unchanged hand. Have the faith that God will bring you to. That God will make a way out of nowhere. That God will open the closed door. That God will give you sight. That God will give you healing. That God will give you deliverance. That God will bring you peace. That God will bring you joy. That God will continue to hold on to you. That God will never leave you or forsake you. You got to have the faith that God will do it. And when you have the faith, disappointment can sneak up. But guess what? Disappointment cannot get the victory. Unbelief can sometimes show his ugly head, but unbelief will not get the victory because I had a made up man. I got a committed heart, and I'm going to continue to put my faith, my confidence, and my trust in the one who holds me in the hollow part of his hand. I tell you, church, you got to trust him. Turn your disappointments. Turn your unbelief. Remove it by having faith. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is good. And he's blessing us even right now. Continue to believe in him. Continue to trust in him. Don't allow what you can visually see to affect the spiritual things that are going on. In due season, God will show us how all of what we're experiencing now, God will show us in due season that how he was there all the time and he was working it out for our good. He's working it out for our good. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for you being God. We thank you for holding us and keeping us and providing for us, sustaining us, healing and delivering us, comforting us, dear God. We thank you for all these things, Heavenly Father. And as we go through this journey, God, not only this journey in which we find ourselves living in and living through, but as we go through the journey of life itself, continue, Lord, to lead, guide, and direct us that's what we need. We need leadership in our life, God, and we need you, God, because you are the leader that never fails. Hallelujah. We need you, Lord Jesus. The power from on high to be able to continue to hold on, trusting in you, reading your word and allowing it to be a part of our living. We thank you and we praise your holy name for you're worthy of all praise and glory. Amen. I start off every sermon 
letting you know each week. Hallelujah to God. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The gift of God to mankind. The gift that was able to, able to redeem us, purchase us, because sin had a cost. And the cost was the shedding of the blood. It used to be for sacrifices of the animals that was used as scapegoats. It was sacrificed the animal and put our sins on the animal and allow one to leave out of the town and he would be the scapegoat. That's what we get the term from a scapegoat. He would leave town with all the sins and the wrong of the people. But then there was also the sacrifice of a lamb, of an animal. For the scriptures say, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. So the animal was the substitute. The blood of the animal was placed on the altar. But one day God sent his son who shed his blood on the altar of a cross. Died for all of us. Because all of us, scriptures say, have fallen short of the glory of God. We were all in sin born in sin but God and through his merciful kind love gave his only begotten son for your sins and the blood purchased our sin became the substitute Christ's blood did for our blood for our blood had no righteousness but his blood was pure it was righteous it was holy it was acceptable Christ did a marvelous work on yonder's cross. And it's the gift that God has given to you and I. I have received it. And I pray that you have also. But if you haven't, this is the most blessed time of your life. Today is the blessed time that God has called for you to receive Jesus. Each week I tell you, he stands at the door and knock knocking on your heart that's what the word does it seeps deep within the heart and the soul of man something said out of the word of god that has touched your life and that touch is god knocking on the door of your heart asking you to let him come in he'll take your word your weight he said he'll trade in he said take my yoke upon you and learn of me for his yoke. His yoke is easy. And he'll take your your, your burden, your trouble, your, your, your situation. He'll make it his own because he had the ability to work it out. It's up to you to make the decision to receive him. I pray today, as the blood is still running warm in your veins, I pray today that you receive Jesus as your Savior. Until our next time together, may God keep and may God bless you. This is Pastor Leonard saying, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son.
ugly frown Seems that when I fix one thing Another one comes Clouding up my vision But I can feel the sun I believe that I can do this I know that I can win Just as long as I have His love 